American football show powered by EP Sports. EP Sports is one of the top suppliers in the UK for all your NFL needs. Check them out today at epsports.co.uk. Week five is in the books in the EFL, and we are going to give you a recap for each game. Uh, we do just want to share our best wishes, though, for all the people struggling with the flooding that is going on in Germany right now. Um, but let's uh, just crack on uh, with some of the news around the league. There isn't too much, to be honest. Uh, the only big uh, thing is that the Thunder, uh, the Berlin Thunder, have fired their special teams coordinator and wide receiver coach, Christian Vitali. Um, I mean, yeah, they had a, not a great special team, so I, I don't think it's too much of a surprise now that there's, seeing as the Hamburg and Dragons have made a move, it seems like other teams are following suit to try and get better people in place, I guess. Yeah, and I think if you look at the two teams that are doing really well, uh, the Sea Devils and the Galaxy, it's special teams that are really winning these games and putting them in position to score. So I think it's kind of a knock-on effect of that. Maybe Berlin think if their special teams get better, they might be able to uh, win some games. Okay. Um, but we will just fly into the, the game recaps for this week. Uh, first one we had was Craig's game. You had the Frankfurt Galaxy going to Barcelona. On the fresh set of downs for Edwards, fakes the handoff, drips over to the right, unloads down the right side. There's a chance and a grab! To the right, to the left, and here I am stuck in the middle with you. Sullivan, plenty of time, throws over the middle, and that's a big, big grab. Here goes Strawman, Strawman. But this would equal his longest field goal made in the NFL, 56 yards away. Kick on the way, it is long enough, is it accurate? Yes it is, holy smokes! Yeah, so the own three Barcelona Dragons went to go and face the three and one Frankfurt Galaxy. The, um, the Spanish side had just recently hired a new O-line coach and signed a new former NFL kicker um, since their last game. So, uh, so the first drive by the Dragons, they was very nearly shut down after a sack on third down, but penalty seemed to keep that drive alive for them and gave gave Zach Edwards the opportunity he needed to unload a deep pass to his receiver, Batellan, um, followed by Edwards finding Batellan again, wide open in the end zone for an easy score, but unfortunately they, they missed the PAT on that one. The, um, the Galaxy were quick to answer, responding with a great drive of their own that consisted of a lot of runs, a lot of catches by Justin Rodney, um, the Galaxy uh, QB Sullivan, he finished the drive with a great pass to, to the former NFL receiver uh, Mahungu, I think. Or Mahongu, Mahungu. I'm not yeah. sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I apologize. Um, yeah, and then they had a successful point after after that, which to give them a, a one point lead. The Galaxy defense, you know, they had a, a good drive after that. They held firm on the Dragons. Um, before taking advantage of the next possession themselves, Sullivan threw quite a perfect pass at the time um, over the middle into the gut of Strayman. Uh, Strayman, Strayman. Again, I apologise if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, for the score, uh, the PAT was successful, giving the Galaxy an eight-point lead uh, at the end of the first quarter, 14-6. to six. Despite the defensive pass interference call on the Galaxy's barns close to the to the end zone, the Dragons were not able to score a touchdown on their first drive. However, the the new kicker already showed his worth by scoring the Dragons' first field goal of the season so far, making the score fourteen to nine. That was uh, their first field goal. Of the season. That was their first successful field goal of the season. Yeah, this is in the second <laughs> quarter. Um, the the Dragons' defense then stepped up uh, on the Galaxy's next possession. They managed to stop Justin Rodney on the on the fourth down, however, the Dragons, they just couldn't seem to get anything going. That seems to be be the story of this offence. They seem to just put a lot of plays together, but they just can't seem to end it off. Um, the Galaxy, they, they were forced points, forced punt, sorry, uh, on the next possession, uh, as the Dragons, Tavares, put enough pressure on Sullivan to force an incomplete pass on third down. As the Dragons had no answer on offense and were forced to point again, the Galaxy were able to move the ball and capitalize. Running back Justin Rodney finished the drive with a touchdown as he went into the end zone. PAT was good, giving Frank Fay a 12 point lead. Um, near the end of the half, Zach Edwards, he was able to scramble a lot and put a lot of yards together to set up the former NFL kicker who scored an insane 56 yard field goal that still had plenty of leg left on it, uh, tying his personal NFL record. So it was nice to see, I guess it adds another dimension of um, 
danger to them, to that offense, because, you know, you're going to have to try and stop them further down the field or they're going to at least put three points on you. The Dragons' defense stepped up again as Brugnani uh, intercepted Sullivan at the end of the first half. Uh, so going into the second half, the Galaxy, they were not able to generate any points out of their first drive. They were forced to points after a free and out. The Dragons were also forced to points on their next drive after a series of holding calls against the offensive line, which pushed back the offense. After they punted the ball away, the Galaxy got lucky after Sullivan got sacked and then threw an interception, which got called back due to a defensive pass interference call. Um, this was a painful penalty for them. For them, you know, instead of you know gaining possession of the ball, um, they've instead lost it to the Galaxy, who have took over on the spot of the foul. So you've gone from gaining an extra possession to them being marched down onto your 10-yard line. It was a nightmare penalty for them. Um, Sullivan, he fired a bullet straight to his receiver, capitalising on the penalty to Mahungu. Mahungu, again, um, went into the end zone for the second time. PAT was no good, though, unfortunately. And the Galaxy just took the lead 27-12. to 12. On the next possession, Edwards threw an interception to Amari Williams, who retained the ball for a lot of yards to around the Dragons' 15-yard line, so it seems to be going bad to worse for the Dragons. Fortunately, the Galaxy defensive back, Desmond Cooper, was injured during that play, and he needed to be helped off the field. Um, however, quarterback Sullivan was able to run it himself for the score, um, and then found his receiver rushed for the two-point conversion, putting the Galaxy on top, 35-12. As, the, as Barcelona struggled again on the next drive, the Galaxy scored once again on the next possession as Sullivan found Strayman in the end zone. However, the Dragons had a quick answer as, a, as quarterback Edwards found this receiver, Mario Flores, deep on the right side of the field for a 73-yard touchdown reception. After the Dragons forced the Galaxy punt, Edwards found his receivers again to start a promising drive, but unfortunately it resulted in just a field goal, uh, reducing the, the Galaxy lead to 20 points, 42 to 22. The Barcelona defence did really step up yet again with another interception to put the Dragons back in a position to score more points. Uh, but after a long drive, they were forced just a point. And then the Galaxy came back on the field with only like 10 minutes left and they just ran the clock out. And that, that was pretty much the end of the game at that point. Um, just to sort of sum all that up and round all that up, the Galaxy were able to keep the four-game winning streak going. However, the Dragons in this game did show a ton of improvement compared to the last few games that they've been playing, in my opinion. They look like a much better side, even though the scoreline might not show it. Um, as the Dragons stand 4-0, this, this was the best performance of the season, as I've just said, and they were missing several players due to injury and illness against a very good Galaxy team. The Galaxy have showed the quality on that side, so I think they've done well. The signing of that kicker was a genius move on their part and shows that you know after that 56-yard attempt, it does add a new dimension to them. Having said that, the Dragons are they're playing Berlin next week. They've got a um, they've got a shot at getting that first win. It's interesting because you've mentioned that their offense kind of gets good plays, but they can never keep it going. By adding a, a reliable kicker, it just it does put a, a plaster on all those problems that they've got a little bit. Yeah, definitely. And it, I think if, if they can put them long drives together, even though he's got a big lead, he, he might not necessarily need it. I mean, it's, it's not what they want. They want to finish drives and they want to at least put six points on the board. But if you've got to take three as a consolation, it's nice to know you've got someone who can make them them big kicks, especially clutch if it's late in late in the half or whatever. Um, just before we move on, MVP in that game, Sebastian Guthier from the Galaxy D, seven tackles, one assist and two sacks. So it was a good performance from him on the day. Very good. Yeah, I like the, the gar Guardians of the Galaxy as well. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty cool, that image. Uh, okay, so speaking of the Berlin Thunder, we'll move on to their game next, which I had. Uh, so Berlin uh, played the Rotslav Panthers, and it was 45-26 at the end of the game to the Panthers. And so he's now got five receivers to choose from. He'll uh, send uh, one of them, in, case, in any case, deep. Inbounds. Yes, it is. It's a touchdown. It is Bonnet. Shemisvav Bonat. Season. We'll see if they manage to get that all together at halftime. We're underway as the kickoff to start the second half is taken at about the five yard line. And this could be going back. There's one man to beat. And Darius Robinson is going to walk into the end zone. 
Uh, so the first half started off a little slow. Uh, Berlin were forced to punt on their first drive. Uh, and then the Panthers ran in for a touchdown with Kwiatkowski. Uh, and then a two, next two drives are just two back-to-back -back punts, so not too much going on. Um, going into the second quarter, though, the Panthers did get another touchdown with Lucas O'Connor throwing a dart down the middle of the field to Mazan, uh, who just zigzagged past three defenders and uh, out and sped everyone uh, past into the end zone. Uh, so that brings it to 13 nil as there's been one PAT missed. Um, wide receiver, who was our MVP of the week, Shantavius Jones, actually then started a quarterback temporarily at this point. Uh, he had a really good 20-yard scramble, um, but the drive ultimately ended up with Bump uh, Berlin fumbling it later down the field. Uh, Panthers then again got a good drive going, uh, but they did take a 20-yard sack uh, by Colin Hill uh, on the uh, Thunder defence. That was just forced the drive into an instant stop uh, and resulted in a pretty short punt, which gave Berlin a good field position so that the running back Jacques Crawford could punch in a touchdown, making it 13-6. Uh, Panthers then, just did what they did, as always, marched up the field. Um, I, can't, I want to shout out here the Thunder defensive back, the Falkis. Uh, he lays it on the race of the receivers, no matter if they're, they're gaining yards, if they're not. Like, he puts the fear of the receiver should have of a defensive back. Um, yeah, so O'Connor, he threw a really big deep ball after this uh, to Bernat, uh, who made a really good sideline catch for the touchdown. Uh, and the field goal was then blocked by said defensive back De Falkis. Um, Thunder wouldn't possess the ball for long though after getting it back. Uh, and uh, O'Connor launched another deep ball down to Bernat. Uh, I think he took it to like the five or six yard line. And then Mark Hendon, uh, one of the two running backs that were getting a lot of ground for the Panthers, um, he proceeded to punch it in for another touchdown, making it 25 6 going into the half. Uh, in the second half, the Panthers opened up with a Touchdown off the kick return with Darius Robinson, who we brought up a couple of times. He's very talented um, for an easy touchdown. Uh, really, he, he honestly didn't like he, he was running properly and he just weaved through and jogged up of it. Um, and then there was a missed two-point attempt, 31-6 uh, straight into the half. Back-to-back uh, -back three and outs caused by both teams. Uh, and the Thunder finally had a real opportunity because Jock Crawford started to heat up. Uh, but they did turn the ball over on downs in the red zone, unfortunately. Uh, Panthers, though, did not want to be outmatched, so they ha had their own four and out straight away. Um, going into the fourth quarter, um, Calvin State, the quarterback for the Thunder, turned on the beans, uh, and he had a really, really nice pass to um, Shantavius Jones. Um, and then uh, he threw it in another, he threw it, sorry, yeah, he threw it, took a huge hit on that pass. Like, from what I've watched, he just takes the biggest hits in, in the league so far, so you should watch that um, and then Jacques Crawford pounded in uh, another touchdown for his second of the game uh, and made the game 31-12. Uh, and then Panthers running back Herndon probably had my favourite run of the week here. I know I've, I put it in the group chat and was screaming about it because he looked like a bowling ball going through the defenders, just absolutely flew through it. Um, all these arm tackles. I'm not surprised that the, the, the special teams coach is there because the tackling wasn't great. Um, yeah, for a 51-yard run touchdown. Uh, Thunder really needed points here, so Stitt just started launching big downfield bombs, really. Uh, there was an interception, obviously, by Correggio, which is a great name, uh, which ultimately resulted in the Panthers not scoring. Uh, Stitt then decided best to stick with Shontavious Jones only, so he threw a dime to him, uh, and Shontavious Jones is really quick. Uh, so he outran all the defence there for an 83-yard touchdown. Uh, and then he also got the two-point attempt off the back of it, so he really is a, a bit of a wonder kid on that team. Uh, score was 37-20 at this point with seven and a half minutes to go. Uh, Panthers just started to run the clock down. Um, there's a really nice pylon catch in the, in the end zone by Bernat again. Uh, so he has a couple of really good catches this game. 45-20 uh, following the two-point attempt. Uh, and then the Thunder receiver, Ndongo, uh, then a really good return. Uh, and Jock Crawford punched his third touchdown of the day, bringing it to 45-26. Um, MVP for this game, I'm giving it to Lucas O'Connor. He went 27 uh, completions, 38 attempts, 286 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, Honourable mention would be Shontavious Jones. Uh, he got a lot of different stats. He got 20-yard rush, two complete passes on two attempts for 19 yards, 142 yards receiving on four targets and one touchdown. It's a pretty crazy stat line. Uh, and then the Berlin Thunders, as Craig said, is going to go head on to the 0-4 Dragons next weekend. 
Uh, and then the three on one Rotslav Panthers host the Sea Devils, 4 0 Sea Devils next weekend. So that's that game. It's going to be a good game. Because at the moment, people seem to be ranking the Panthers just below the likes of the Sea yeah. Devils and the Galaxy. So I think after how it went last time, um, I think this is a game that they can really sort of, if they can step up and they can hang with the Sea Devils in this game, it shows that they are in that top tier of group and they're not just sort of hovering in between them two and everybody else below. Yeah. And I think it'll be interesting going forward is if teams like the Galaxy and the Sea Devils start getting injuries, I think the Panthers have got a lot of strength in depth. Because you mentioned there about the running game, Adam, their main running back, who me and Craig are going to be talking to later so this week, Phileas uh, Pascalini, he was out with an injury and he had a couple of plays. So, you know, if they can, without the number one running back, they've got two other running backs that can do the job as well. That's fantastic strength in depth, and that's only going to help them. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, and though that Mark Herndon kid, Jesus, what a run. Honestly, it was, I, I saw it, I was like, just so pumped up. I was like, that's the best run scene. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, Tim, you've got the final game uh, for, for last weekend. Yep, final game: Leipzig Kings nil, Hamburg fifty-five. Tepler sends it center field. Johnson clear daylight for a run. Has blockers. Finds daylight a bit. Cuts through. Trying to cut back. Still on his feet, and he's going to run in for a touchdown. But there is a penalty marker on the field only two in the power rankings wow look at your ball strip it away pick it up touchdown defense in this second half and here is pressure awani a way to get away he's got to get rid of that ball and it is picked off moving along there for that interception pulling it in barry Marichuse. So there was a crowd of 2,400 people saw the Sea Devils destroy the Kings in a powerful all-round performance. Um, since the departure of coach Ted Dysher, the Sea Devils' combined total score has been 99-6. to six. Um, One big area of strength for Hamburg is the special teams. Hamburg returned three punts for 173 yards and two of them for touchdowns. All three of them were returned by Justin uh, Rogers. Um, the defence sacked the Leipzig quarterbacks eight times with John Philippe Bombeck getting two and a half sacks and Barry Mareschke also getting two interceptions on the day as well. Um, all this meant the Hamburg offence started with great field position all the time. So Hamburg only had 282 yards of total offence due to the good field position. Um, Xavier Johnson ran 13 times for 148 yards and one touchdown. It's worth noting that he's second leading rusher in the league um, and he's a long way behind Madre London's total. Uh, but when you look at it per carry, he's actually averaging 7.07 .07 yards per carry compared to Madre London's nine yards per carry. So if he had the quantity of runs, he'd been very near Madre London's total. Um, Jadrin Clark had his usual good performance. Um, he only needed to throw 15 times, completed eight passes for 81 yards and two touchdowns. Um, the, you can tell how the game was going. Hamburg actually put their back of quarterback in at the end of the third quarter. So, you know, they were well ahead and it was a total domination even by then. Um, feel a bit sorry for their kicker. Kicker Philip Anson, he hit a 50-yard field goal, which was the EFL season-long record until a couple of minutes <laughs> later when our friend Giorgio kicked the 56-yarder. Um, Leipzig continued to play without the starting quarterback, Michael Birdsong. Um, I spoke to a team source today and they're not sure when he's coming back, so there's no update, but they're on a bye week anyway. One bright spot, though, was the play of uh, the last Taps guest we had, Alpha Jallo. He had another big game, uh, both sides of the ball, six passes for 55 yards. He re returned kicks and played D as well. But MVP for this game was Justin Rogers. Uh, he played all over the place and was really good. As I say, bye week for Leipzig. And as we've already mentioned, the big game on Saturday is the Sea Devils taking on my number three seed, the Panthers. OK, what would you have Justin Rogers' stats there so he can pick a, a Taps MVP? Uh, I can do. Do you want to pause okay. this and yeah, just a quick really look? Good. 
So Justin Rogers had three punt returns, 173 yards, and the longest of 69 yards. And he had two tackles, two tackles and one tackle for loss. And do you say two of those punts went for touchdowns as well? Yeah, two for touchdowns. Damn. Yeah, he's, I think he's half's MVP of the week. I wouldn't argue with that. I'll go with that. Good job, Justin Rogers. We'll hopefully get you on soon. <laughs> um, but yeah, anything else you want to talk about uh, before we, we wrap it up? I'm just looking forward to that game on a weekend, to be honest. I think yeah. I think now we've we're a few games in, we can sort of we've got a feel now of where I think some teams are at. Um, I think the Dragons have the potential to surprise people. They've they've had a rough start, but you can see that they have do have some quality there. It just they need to sort of figure things out. I think, um, and they could upset some people, but you're definitely starting to see where where teams are at. Yeah, I think if you look at all three of them, it all seems to be the other team that same kind of strength. So you got Panthers, Sea Devils, which is like a top of the, the boards, Dragons, Thunders, kind of two teams that have done well, but just not, not got great records right now. And then the Surge versus the Centurions. I think that's good. That's kind of a middle of the league kind of game. They're both pretty equal. It's a good offense versus a good defense. Mm-hmm. I think one thing that stood out to me is the, let's call it inconsistency of the refereeing decisions and the explanations as well. It's quite yeah. hard to understand what's going on sometimes when they're explaining the penalties and it's like, I didn't actually see that on the field. So I think that'll get better with the experience of the game to the refs as well, because obviously they're new to this league too. Yeah, right. I, thought, I thought that with that pass interference call I talked about in the Dragons game, it, the pass interference wasn't affecting the play. It wasn't the the receiver and it wasn't like the, the penalty wasn't called on the receiver and the DB that had sort of clashed to come for the yeah. ball. It was the two that were five or so yards in front. Um, personally, I don't like that. We've been through this before. We've talked about the NFL. I think if, if it's a pass interference and it's not, it's not affecting the play in general, sort of directly, then it shouldn't be called. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it was, and it was a big decision. It really sort of, yeah, it really threw the game. Um, good, good play by the defensive back. He got the interception. Yeah, yeah it was a great play. Um, and uh, you know, it's gone from Barcelona making a comeback, which they seem to be on the way to, and the momentum is shifting their way a little bit to the Galaxy sort of putting an even bigger lead on them, and their heads going down a bit. Yeah, I think I heard one of the refs. He picked. He has a has a flag. He may have picked it up and he just went, my timeout. <laughs> it was just a timeout for no reason. There was one where there was offsetting penalties and he was trying to explain that there were different categories of penalties and it must have gone on for about 15 minutes in explaining. It's like, mate, just tell them where to put the ball and where to start. He's like, because they're offsetting penalties and one's a different category of penalty to the other, then this one... Like, yeah, first year though, I think there's always going to be some struggles in some areas, and the refing's yeah. not surprising. Yeah. Anyone. I think they need to get replay in there ASAP. Um, but that is it for us from this week. Uh, make sure you check us out and keep following us on our news on social medias. Uh, Craig, do you have those uh, handles? Yeah, so if you want to find us on Instagram or Twitter, it is Tafs underscore UK. If you want to find us on Facebook, just type in That American Football Show and we'll pop up. And the same goes for our YouTube. If you just type in That American Football Show, we'll pop up on there if you if you like to tune in from there. Um, yeah, with our YouTube, yeah, like Craig said, and all our socials are on there. You can see all our Elf Ball or series of previous players. Um, please leave us feedback, leave us questions, leave us uh, comments. We, we want to hear from you, what you want to hear from us. Uh, and if you do like this stuff, please give us a like and subscribe. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. Make sure you head over and check out our friends at EP Sports for all your NFL and equipment needs. And we'll see you next week.